Hello and welcome. This is the first video in a series of tutorials covering the basics of AutoCAD. These tutorials may also be useful to someone who has not used AutoCAD for several years and needs to get back up to speed with the latest version. I will be using AutoCAD 2021, not the LT version. LT does not have 3D functionality and other tools like sheet sets. In these tutorials, I use the PC version of AutoCAD, and if you are using the Mac version, you will notice that it looks different. These videos should still be helpful, but you may have to look for the tools in a different location. In this video, I will cover the following. An overview of the interface, using basic drawing tools, navigation within a drawing, using selection windows, and setting up drawing precision. Let's start off with an overview of the interface for AutoCAD. When you open up AutoCAD, you will see the Get Started screen. Here you can start a new drawing, view recent documents, check on notifications, and send feedback to Autodesk. To start a new drawing, you can either click here or choose from one of the templates in the drop down menu. For now, we will just click on Start Drawing. This will open up your drawing and present the main drawing area filling most of the screen. At the top of the main drawing area, there are tabs. The Start tab is the Getting Started area, and each drawing will open up with a different tab along the top. Also, at the bottom of the main drawing area, there are tabs for Model Space. This is Model Space, where we do most of the drawing. And then in layouts, you can set up different pages for different sizes for printing. On here, you can add title blocks, borders, and other parts of information. For now, we'll just stay in model space. On the top left-hand corner, you will find the application button. Please make sure that you do not double-click this as it force closes AutoCAD. If you click on it once, you can view the main tools that are available and also the options for more advanced settings. We won't go into these just now. Beside that is the Quick Access Toolbar. By default, that is set for some of these tools like New, Open, Save, Save As, and other tools like Plot, Undo, and Redo. In the middle of the title bar, not only will you see the name of AutoCAD, but the name of the drawing that you currently have open. To the right of that then, we have the Info Center. In this box, you can type information to search for various things by using keywords. Beside that, you can also check on your account details and license information. At the top right-hand corner then, we have the Minimize button and also the Restore Down Maximize button. And I always recommend having AutoCAD maximized to the full. You may have also noticed that at the bottom of my screen, I automatically hide the Windows taskbar to provide a little bit more space. The last option at the top right hand corner is the X button, which will close the software. Below all of that then, we have the ribbon. On the ribbon, there are different sections of panels which display various tools. There are also tabs which give you access to other tools available for AutoCAD. On first viewing, this might seem quite intimidating, but as you get used to AutoCAD, you will be able to see what all the different tools do. If you're unsure what a tool means, hover over it and it will show you the name. If you stay there for a little longer, it will give an explanation of what the tool might be used for. Over here on the right hand side, then we have the view cube. This can be used to change the views within your drawing. You can rotate by 90 degrees in either direction. If you're drawing in three dimensions, you can go to an isometric view, or you can view different elevations and a top and a bottom view of what you have in your drawing area. Underneath that then, we have the navigation bar. Here we can control how you navigate through your drawing. This is the pan tool and the zoom extents tool. There is also Orbit for 3D, and then also for 3D, the full navigation wheel. We won't use either of those last two tools in this series of videos. 
down at the bottom of the screen then, we have the status bar toggle buttons. This will help you control AutoCAD using different things like the grid display and the snap tools. Also, we have polar tracking and some of the other things. One thing that you might not have automatically open on your screen is dynamic input. This will allow you to change the settings for that and check that everything is the way that it should be. This part in the middle is called the command line. You don't necessarily need to put the cursor in there to type. If you start to type, it will automatically appear in that area. And the last thing to mention then is the UCS. UCS stands for User Coordinate System. It sets the origin and orientation of your drawing. AutoCAD uses a Cartesian coordinate system with an X and a Y axis in the working plane that is currently visible. If you're working in three dimensions, there is also a Z axis, which you may have seen a moment ago. Lastly, just to say about the command line, my personal preference is that that can be hidden. You may wish to keep it, visible for now as you learn the program but you can close it and then if you wish to show it again at any point that can be brought back again. If you are hiding the command line you do need to make sure that you have dynamic input on so that you will see various commands on the main part of the drawing area. Now we will cover the drawing basics and some of the associated functions like navigation, selection windows and drawing precision. I'm going to use some of the tools on the draw palette on the ribbon. If you have AutoCAD open, give some of these a try yourself. The first one we can use is the line tool. So we can draw a line in the main drawing area. To complete the command, hit enter or alternatively escape can also work. What is the difference then between the line tool and the polyline? If we click line, and draw an object like this and then if we use the polyline and draw a similar object up here what happens when you try to select these so if you click on the line down here to select that you have to click on each part individually to select it whereas if we click up here on the polyline that is connected together. You may have noticed that I deselected the lines a moment ago. To deselect, we hit escape. The next tool over then is the circle tool. There are different options on how you can draw a circle, but for now let's just use the normal circle tool. So because I'm using dynamic input, it will tell me here beside the cursor that I need to specify the center point for the circle. We can click in the drawing area and then that's asking me to specify the radius. So as I move that out, I can decide how big I want the circle to be and click again. The arc tool, again for it, there are various options, but let's just use the basic arc tool for now. And to draw that, we specify three points. First of all, the start point, then the second point of the arc, and then the end point. The next tool here is the rectangle tool, which can also be used to draw squares. So we can draw a rectangle, different types of rectangle, and to repeat the previous command, if we just hit enter, that will draw another rectangle, and we can draw one of a different size and shape. The last tool that we'll cover just now is the ellipse tool. It works a little bit like a circle, but because it's an ellipse, you need to specify two directions, the length and the width of the ellipse. Next is navigation. So if we want to zoom in on a specific part, you need to use a scroll buttoned mouse. It's very much recommended that when you're using AutoCAD, you use a scroll button mouse. And you can use that button to scroll in and scroll out to view. As well as that, if you hold it down, you can pan around to view different parts of your drawing. Notice that where you place the cursor is where it will zoom into. And also where you place the cursor, it will zoom out in the opposite direction. So you can easily move around using these tools. 
as well as that there is a navigation bar over here that has the pan tool which can be activated and then de deactivated by hitting escape and if you have zoomed in and you want to see everything that's on your drawing you can click on this button for zoom extents and there are other zoom options there as you become more familiar with AutoCAD. In terms of selecting various things I have already clicked on items to select those. If you select something by accident and you want to deselect that, hold down, hold down the shift key and that will deselect something. And then if you want to select numerous items, it's much quicker to use select some windows. So if we draw in this direction here, a selection window, this is going to select everything that is totally enclosed inside the area. Notice that the area is a blue color and that the line is solid. So when you draw this selection window, it will highlight or pick up everything that is completely enclosed inside the selection window. Whereas if we draw the other direction, notice that the area is green and the line is dashed. This is called the crossing selection and it means that anything which is crossed by that line will be selected. Notice that the only thing that was totally enclosed there was the rectangle but that it picked up other items as well. Again to deselect hit escape. The final selection tool is the lasso tool. Personally I don't use this very much myself but if you hold down your left mouse button and you draw round various shapes that will select those different items. So for now I'm just going to delete all of those. Moving on to setting the units. So if you type in UN that will automatically bring up commands in AutoCAD that start with that and the one we want is called units. At this point in time it is set as millimeters and that's the way we would want it in the UK but you can choose inches and various other options there as well and you can choose the precision to a certain number of decimal points at this stage we'll just leave it as default. To draw lines of a specific length then you can start off with your line and notice that as we make the line longer the dimension is changing so if we want that to be 10 millimeters long we can type in 10 and hit enter. Notice that as I move the cursor at the moment the polar tool is showing and above the cursor there is a green dashed line. So again we can type in 10 and so long as the polar tool is on we are getting that to an accurate dimension. The polar tool is controlled down here and as well as having it at 90 degree angles there are other options as well so you may want to draw at 45 degree increments or 30 and 60 and so on so let's try one and if you move the cursor it will automatically snap to the 30 degree angle or to 60, 90, 120, 150 and so on. As well as that, if we want that to be a specific length in that direction, we can type that in now. Another option to do that is you, when you are drawing, you can hit the tab key and that will allow you to change the angle of your line, maybe to a specific line angle. Um, so let's say we wanted that at 18 degrees, that will put that in. However, that has made that a random length. So you might just want to be careful with that. And if we wanted to undo that, and we wanted to control both things, what you can actually do is use the little arrow key. So if we hold shift and type or hit the, the arrow key just to the right of M on your keyboard and type in an angle say of 23 degrees, hit enter, that will restrict it to that angle and now we can put in the exact length that we want that say 25. The other option to control your cursor is the ortho tool. That will predominantly keep your 
angle of your line to 90 degree angles like so but I think the, the polar tool is usually better for the applications that I would use. So we'll just delete those and go back and use the rectangle tool. So at this point, I'm going to draw something that is 600 by 600. So you can start off by typing 600 and either hit the comma key on your keyboard or the tab key. And that will allow you to type in the other dimension. Now this is something that very often happens to beginners with AutoCAD and they worry that they've done something wrong, they can't see what is happening, but all you need to do is zoom out using your scroll button. And I'm going to move that up out of the way just so the, the UCS isn't interfering with it. Because that was being restricted there, I have hit the F8 key and that brings that up to a point that is away from the UCS. One final thing to remember at this point is that you should always save your drawings and make sure that you back those up somewhere in the cloud. So you could use Dropbox or OneDrive. Certainly for any of my students that are watching this video, we have a OneDrive account associated with the student's uh, email addresses and you should save your drawings there. This is the end of the first video in this tutorial series. The next video will build upon this one using more of a draw and modify tools and I will also show you how to use the object snap. I will be adding further videos to this series and also to my channel so why not subscribe so that you know when a new video has been added. Thanks for watching and I hope you have found it useful.